Okay, so this is quite a involved um, synthetic, so I've had to make it a bit small so that we can see it, but hopefully, hopefully you can. Um, so, complete the box below, so just formally for the reactions involved in the synthesis of compound D, which is going to be this boy here. So it looks incredibly complicated, but you can see that they are adding molecules together. So let's try and break this up a little bit. Um, to see uh, if we can figure out what's actually going on. So the first thing I've done is I've taken NH2 groups and I've produced N2. So that one you should be okay with because it's in the production of the diazonium ions. So for that, um, you need sodium NaNO2, sodium nitrite, and you need HCl. Um, you also remember that you need to do that below 10 degrees C. Um, right, let's have a look at the next one. I've taken this with F minus, as they showed us on the previous question, to produce this boy. That's all fine and dandy. Um, so that there is that group there. So I appear to have added to that there and there, this molecule here. So how can I've done that? Well, we saw about how we can make carbon-carbon bonds at the previous reaction. So I'm gonna draw this out, this guy here. So that's the molecule, the bit that I've added. So we just draw him out like so, NH2. How did we do that? Well, remember we used halogenyl alkanes, so if I put a Br there and a Br there, that Br would go, that would have a plus charge on it and that would link up with the carbon atom as we saw below. So um, if I just run through how that would work, is that if I put that in with FeBr3, which they've given me, that Br would go, that Br would go, I'd end up with a plus charge there and a plus charge there, which would then add on to the benzene ring. But they want the reagent, so I'll go back and I'll add it on, it's going to be a bromine there, and it's going to be a bromine there as well. Okay, so, uh, uh, and then, so I've got that, and then I need to take this guy, which hopefully you can see is all of that bit there, that bit's come from that molecule there, to make this. So what have I added to get that? I've added this boy here, so let's draw him out. So I've got a phenyl group. Opposite the phenyl group, I have that there. That's NH2. So I'm just copying C double bond O. So I produced this guy here, which is an A by bond. So to do that, you would use a carboxylic acid as shown there. Okay, in the synthesis below, so this is going to do a little bit of um, uh, reactive mass calculations now. Um, 1.73 grams of compound D was prepared, um, and luckily they've drawn the structures for us again, so we don't have to keep turning the page, so that's always nice. Um, Over percentage was 40%. How much, what was the mass of 1,3-diamino benzene that I needed, which is that boy there, um, to go to the synthesis. So, the molar mass for that, if you add it all up, is 108. So let's do that. They've kindly given me the molar mass of that, which is three, four, six. That saves you about 50 minutes adding things up. So, obviously the first thing you do is you would calculate the moles of D, because they've given you a mass and they got the molar mass. Oh. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, so moles of D is going to be 
uh, they gave it to be 1.73 grams divided by the molar mass, which is 346, which gives you 0.005 moles. However, it was only 40% yield. So in order to work out how much 1,3-diaminobenzene I needed, I need to scale that up for the account that I only get a 40% yield. So moles of that guy, 1,3 required, is going to be 0 0.005, but you need to times it by 100 and divide by 40 because it's only 40% yield. And if you do that, you get 0 0.0125 moles, like so. And then the final thing is convert that into a mass. So the mass is obviously moles times molar mass, 0 0.0125. The molar mass we set up here was 108. And if you do that, the answer is 1.35 grams, like so. So compound D has been developed for possible use as a drug to treat heart conditions, but um, when I make compound D, only 25% of the dose was actually effective. Why is that? Well, let's whiz back and look at D. And um, what can you see? Well, when you're thinking about being effective drugs, you should always think about optical isomerism. Can we spot some chiral centers in here? Well, I'm sure you can. Um, we have got a chiral center here um, because he's attached to four different groups and you've also got a chiral center there. So I've got two chiral centers in the molecule. For every one chiral center, I get two isomers. I've got two chiral centers, that means I get four different optical isomers. Um, which is why only 25%, only a quarter of the drug is actually effective. How can I improve that? The question goes on to say, how can you improve upon that? Well, uh, the normal ones is you would try and start from a natural product um, because um, if it's come from a natural source like a plant or an animal, you only ever get one isomer. Um, you could use chiral catalyst as well. Um, you could use enzymes as part of the synthesis. Oh, uh, right, so the next question is about amino acids. Um, what I've got to do is I've got to look to see how this amino acid reacts with sodium carbonate. Sodium carbonate will, of course, react with carboxylic acids, so it won't touch the alcohol. So OH, um, and then we've got CH2, like so. Um, nothing's going to happen to my NH2 group. However, um, this will produce the sodium salt of the carboxylic acid group, like so. How about this guy? I have got uh, alcohol and sulfuric acid, uh, and I've got a carboxylic acid group there, so you're kind of thinking ester, aren't you? Um, what's going to go on? Well, I'm going to have, uh, hopefully not that, um, I'm going to have OH and then I'm going to have CH2, CH, NH2, C double bond O and then rather than that O I draw that O and it becomes CH2 and then uh, NT ring like so. Um, the other thing to consider is that I'm in sulfuric acid, so if I'm in sulfuric acid, um, it will protonate the NH2 group to give me NH3 plus as well. So I'm going to suggest a use now for the ester that I've just made. Um, obviously perfumes um, is a typical one that most people would use because they smell nice. Uh, right. Um, let's have a look at another organic synthesis. So I have got this boy here. I've got to make serine. So how am I going to do that? I start with this boy here and I've got to get here. So let's just look and see what groups are changing. That group 
is becoming NH2. Um, let's have a look down here. What's changed here? Um, I'll do that a different colour. Uh, my OH group has become a carboxylic acid group, like so. So let's deal with that. Uh, shall we have a look at the next one as well? Um, if I go back to red, um, it looks can go from here to here. That group has uh, become an alcohol like so. So let's tackle this uh, one by one um, while we've got everything on. So if I run through the questions that come up, what reagent and conditions are used for reaction three? Well, I've taken, um, I, well, I've te replaced Cl with NH2, so it's hot ethanolic ammonia um, that you would use for that one. What type of reaction is reaction four? Reaction four is an alcohol to a carboxylic acid, so of course it's oxidation. Um, and reaction five, I've got a ester becoming an alcohol group, so that of course is hydrolysis.